Scientist and Assistant Professor of Education at Michigan State University. She joins us from East Lansing in Michigan. Thanks so much for your time, Shireen. I'd like to know from today what you make of this Senate vote. Well, it's really surprising. It's um, a positive move forward, of course. Uh, it took a long, long time for us to get here. Many of us have been lobbying our senators and our congresspeople for years now, since 2015, to move forward in legislating an end to the U.S.'s role in the, in the war in Yemen. Like you mentioned, the U.S. is heavily involved uh, militarily, and this has been going on without congressional approval, first under the administration of Obama and then following through with Trump administration. And um, the role of Congress is to, in fact, declare war. The president is not technically allowed to declare war, so the country has been violating its own federal laws in order to conduct this war in Yemen. And today we've finally seen, for the very first time since the War Powers Act of 1973 was legislated, this is the very first time the Senate has, in fact, approved or gone through with this uh, War Powers Resolution and condemned uh, international, an international war, which is not authorized by Senate. Shireen, this vote was ultimately a symbolic gesture. I mean, it would have to go to the House of Representatives and then would end up presumably on President Trump's desk after that. So ultimately, right now, it is a symbolic gesture ahead of it having to potentially go back to Capitol Hill next year. For you, as a Yemeni activist, is it enough? I think it's a step forward. Um, several months ago, when the same exact bill, SJ Res 54, was introduced back in March uh, by Senator, or late February, by Senator Sanders, Lee, and Murphy, it was voted to be tabled. So they didn't even want to discuss this issue at all um, uh, back, you know, eight months ago. And here we are at the end of the year. It is the end of the congressional session, 115th congressional session. And um, although there were some, you know, maneuvers in the House that prevented this from a similar bill to, you know, from passing in the House, which would have then made its way to the president, um, I still think that this is an important victory. It's much more than symbolic. It provides some kind of leverage for the UN, who is engaged in peace talks right now with the various Yemeni parties in Stockholm. And um, I think it also shows us that the Senate in the new year is willing to pass this bill again. And we've been working in the House to try to get um, you know, Congress people to sponsor, co-sponsor bills and uh, that aim to end the U.S.'s role in Yemen. And so we know that Nancy Pelosi is on our side on this issue and um, the War Powers Resolution can continue to be invoked in the new Congress, um, which is going to be, um, the House is going to be majority Democrat in the new year. So I'm hopeful that if the Senate was able to do it this one time, they'll pick it back up in the new year and it'll go through the House and it'll go through the, you know, the process. This is as far as we've come. So I think it is symbolic, but it's also uh, helps to show what the, you know where we'll be in the in the next year. Shireen, I want to ask, what do you think's changed since March? What what's shifted to allow this to happen? Uh, I think a couple of things. Back in August, there was the bombing of the school bus full of children. Forty-four children were killed. They were wearing UNICEF backpacks. They were on their way from or to a field trip. And, um, you know, a Saudi-led bomb that was, in fact, made in the USA um, hit the bus and killed these children and also killed several more at a market. And um, I think that was finally a turning point. Unfortunately, it wasn't the most gruesome. It wasn't the largest um, mass killing that happened in Yemen over the last three and a half years. But the fact that it was just a bus full of children and there was an admission from the Saudi-led coalition that they had, in fact, struck the bus and that they, you know, they characterized the children on the bus as missile launchers, as people who were launching missiles from Yemen to Saudi Arabia, which is completely absurd. And I think it finally drove some attention on Yemen, and not just um, attention about the situation, but here in U.S. media, the uh, relationship between the Saudis and the U.S. and the extent of U.S. involvement, and CNN had done that investigation that tied the bomb that fell on them to Lockheed Martin bomb. And then, you know, after that, we had the uh, gruesome and horrific murder of uh, mm. Khashoggi that was ordered by the Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, who was the architect of the war in Yemen. So I think these two things have helped kind of turn um, the wave, and, and it's just become much more harder for these Congress people and for senators to ignore what's going on in, in Saudi Arabia and what they're providing the Saudi Arabians with and the UAE in Yemen uh, in facilitating this war. And so we've seen even ardent supporters of Saudi Arabia, like Lindsey Graham, mm. speak out against 
the murder of Khashoggi. Um, and I think that has all helped with these votes that we've seen, especially from Republicans. Shireen Alademi um, in Michigan. Thanks so much for your time, Shireen. Thanks for having me. Well, there's been a major...